In this short video, we will look at two example calculations using Berg's Boner plots to determine the dissociation energy of a molecule. Here are the two questions, both taken from Atkins. You will see in both cases we are given a series of vibrational transitions. You will also notice as we run through the series that the values get smaller as the differences between the vibrational states get smaller. The idea behind Berg's Boner plots is simple. If we think of the vibrational levels in an anharmonic oscillator, we know they will converge to a maximum as shown in the diagram on the left. At this point, the bond is vibrating to such an extent that it dissociates, and the energy required for this to occur is the dissociation energy. Berg's Boner plot allows us to use spectroscopic data that we can measure, for example, the early vibrational transitions. By extrapolating until this energy gap is zero, which is the point of dissociation, we can estimate the remaining transitions that we may not be able to measure experimentally. The figure on the right shows a graphical representation of the same image. Each bar in the diagram represents a vibrational transition. We may be able to measure some of these experimentally, but we estimate the rest by extrapolating. Thus, Berg's Boner allows us to estimate the dissociation energy. Actually, as you can see from the image from Atkins, it's an overestimation, but nonetheless useful. Let's look at specific examples. In the first example, we are given a series of transition wave numbers for 15 transitions. All we need to do is to plot these against V plus a half, where V is the vibrational state where each transition originates from. Again, relating to the potential energy curve, we are essentially totting up the known values of transitions. We can then create a plot of this data. To find the dissociation energy, we need to extrapolate the plot to both axes so that we may find the area of the triangle, which will equal the dissociation energy. This is easy to do in software, but when hand drawing, you will need to do a bit more manual work. We can find the height of the triangle by finding the y-axis intercept. My Excel output here tells me that it is 2238. We can find the x-axis intercept by finding the slope of the line and a point on the line and using y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 to determine the equation of the line and hence find the value of x for y is equal to zero. Or if you have room in the graph paper you can just extrapolate to zero. Either way this value is 19.4. Using the formula for the area of the triangle we can deduce the area to be 21574 wave numbers, which is about 257 kilojoules per mole. For the second example, we are given a number of transitions, much fewer this time, but the process is the same. We can create a table and draw out the plot. Calculating the area of a triangle of before, we find it is 2978 wave numbers, or about 35.6 kilojoules per mole.